This is a video that tells you everything you need to know about inventory locations in Bright Pearl. So what do we need to know about inventory locations? Locations specify a physical area within a warehouse, and the Bright Pearl multi-warehouse feature is completely independent from locations. So even if you're just running one warehouse in Bright Pearl, you can have multiple locations. And similarly, if you're running multiple warehouses, you don't necessarily need to use warehouse locations within those warehouses. So locations are used only on picking and packing paperwork and when running a stock take. So it's only an internal piece of information. And a location is defined by aisle, bay, shelf and bin. Effectively, these are just four separate data points. And we have a few examples of locations here. 1.8.2.2, A.0.1, upstairs or shed 23. And the minimum requirement for a location is just one character in the first field, which is aisle. So here, for example, upstairs would all be written in the aisle field. So BrightPell has got three different types of location management. The first one is none, where locations are not tracked at all. The second option is standard location management, where all inventory for a given product is assigned to one location. That can be any location, and different products can be placed in the same location, but one product cannot be split across multiple locations. And then the third option is multi-concurrent, where each batch of a product received is assigned a location, and you do that when you receive a purchase order. So let's see how we get set up. First of all, we need to activate inventory locations. We then need to add some locations, and then we need to assign a default location to the products. So to activate location management, go to your BrightPearl account, go to the setup area, and then on the left hand side go to products slash inventory and inventory settings. Here there's an option where we can choose which type of location management we want, and there's none, standard or multiple concurrent. For the moment let's just choose standard and save changes. This now adds a menu item on the left hand side for warehouse locations. The screen opens with the locations for the main warehouse, and if we wanted to show locations for other warehouses, we could do so in the filter. So let's add a couple of locations now. Click Add a Location, enter the values in, and hit Enter. You return to this screen where it's a simple case of tabbing through, hitting Enter, and adding locations as you need. When you're done, click to go back to all locations. If you want to add warehouse locations for a second warehouse, it's easier to choose the warehouse first in the filter and then add locations. Now that we have a few locations for the main warehouse, let's add them to a product. From the product list, choose to open a product, and in the stock and inventory tab, you can see that you've got a default location field now for each of your warehouses. And the way we use these fields is we either type the down key to see a list of all locations, or we can actually start typing a location, which will filter the list where we can choose one. And this is giving the product a default location. Now if we're on standard location management, changing this will also update all existing inventory, because that product has to all live in the same place. But if we're on multi-concurrent location management, this won't affect existing inventory. This will only be used for future inventory received. Save the product to store the default location. You can also do this by spreadsheet, so you can update a whole load of products at once by importing an Excel file. What we're going to do now is see how inventory locations are used when we receive items into stock from a purchase order. So we have a purchase order here where we've got the CO2 cylinders that we've just saved the default inventory location for which means that when we go to receive inventory, the Goods In screen shows us where we should be receiving these items into. And we can see here we've got A002. Because we're on standard location management, every Goods In or every receipt of these items goes into the same location. So let's click Submit, which receives the goods into stock. If we visit the same screen again, the Goods In screen, on multi-concurrent location management, you can see that we've actually got a choice of where we put the inventory for this particular batch. The field is pre-populated with the product's default location, but if I wanted to, I could choose a different location for it. 
And if there wasn't enough space in this particular location, I could split this batch. So receive five into one location and five into a second location. So that's the main difference between standard location management and multi-concurrent location management. When you print the put away note, these will appear on the printout for your warehouse manager to put the items away in the right place. Now let's have a look to see how we use locations when we're picking and packing shipments, in other words in the goods out processing. Here we have a goods out note that I've created for a sales order that contains these carbon dioxide cylinders. You can see on the packing note that we have the location, which helps our packing team, or our warehouse team, go to the right place in the warehouse, A002. And on standard location, because all items are in the same place, there's just one location shown here. If we have a look at a goods out note on multiple concurrent location management, where we're actually shipping 20 items, you can see these items have been spread across two different inventory locations. So five need to be picked from A001, and 15 need to be picked from A002. And it's really important that your warehouse team do pick from the right locations, otherwise your Bright Pearl system is rapidly going to go out of sync with what's really going on in the warehouse. And to see locations on your packing slip, what you need to do is go to Setup, Products and Inventory, Inventory Settings, and then Display Inventory Location on Delivery Note, choose Yes. So there we saw locations on packing documentation, which is the paperwork that relates to a single order. We can also see locations when we do a consolidated picking list for multiple goods out notes. So from the goods out note list, if I select a load of them and hit Pick, we get what's called a consolidated picking list. And this contains items across all of the orders grouped by location. And this helps our warehouse team run around the warehouse, pick everything onto a trolley, and then the packing team can later put it into specific cartons for each order. And you can see here on the left hand side how this is sequenced by location. It's important to mention that inventory is allocated and fulfilled automatically using FIFO, not using locations. So if you've got products spread across multiple locations, you might not have the most efficient picking route, because what Brightpool is doing is it's actually pulling the oldest inventory first, using first in, first out. So be aware of that if you're using multi-concurrent location management. So the last thing we need to know about inventory locations is what's in stock and where to find it. If I go to my inventory detail report, which is found at Products, Inventory Detail, we see a line for every single batch received. So here's the 33 gram carbon dioxide cylinder. We've got some in A002, a further quantity in A002, more in A002, and then some in A001. Now this product is spread across multiple locations because we're using multiple concurrent location management. If we were on standard location management, all of these products would be in the same place. So when doing a stock take on multi-concurrent, you need to export the inventory detail report, which shows you exactly where everything is. If you're on standard location management, you can do this from the product list. So let's go products, list products, where we need to filter by warehouse so that the right location shows. So let's show the filter, choose our main warehouse and go. Now we can see for those products that have been assigned a default location, it's shown here in the location column for that particular warehouse. Not all products have been assigned location, which is why a couple of these values are blank. If you're on standard location management, this is the start of the stock take process, and there's a separate video that shows you how to run a stock take. And that takes us to the end of the video that shows you how to manage inventory locations within Bright Pearl.